Hi everyone, welcome, Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel, how you keep it. Today's video is all about shaker style strips, can you see Sean behind me, he's on that job right now. But today it's all about the specifics, how wide the strips are, how wide the strips are going to be when we cut them up, how many sheets we cut up, um, how we stack them up, how we keep them square when we're sanding those edges, lots of details which I may have missed in previous videos because there are other videos um, on shaker style doors. Um, that I've uploaded over the years. So if you're interested, you want to find out more, stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so back in the shop and got the new camera on the go. Okay, so I do all my filming with my phone. Never really done filming with a proper camera, to be honest, because smartphones are so great nowadays. Today's video is testing out an S23 Ultra, so let's see the quality difference. Always try and film in 4K anyway. Um, so, forget the buckets at the top. It's just precaution. Still getting a drip or two. Anyway, the video is not about the roof. It's about shaker style strips. And I'm going over a few specific details today. How wide the strips are going to be. Why we think we should have them at this width. Um, what materials we use. How many sheets we're going to cut up. How we cut them up, etc. So let's start with the basics. These shaker style strips are to make kind of like faux shaker style doors. Okay. There are many ways of making shaker style doors. And this is probably the easiest version. The easiest method to do. For somebody who's just getting into DIY. For someone who wants um, um, an easy method of making shaker style doors. You don't get that shaker style effect at the back of the door obviously um, just the front but that's okay with us I like the fact that we're using a solid door blank um, rather than a six mil panel or a nine mil panel for the center um, we are going to be gluing these strips onto a piece of 12 so that is our construction method we cut up 12 mil so we've got a selection of 12 there and um, we cut up the 12 mil and we shake them up just by gluing and pinning the strips on so Let's talk about the strip width. So we kind of like 65-ish mil. I think we cut them up at 64 to get the most out of a sheet. Am I right, Sean? Yeah, yeah, 64, 65. 64, 65. Oh, we're talking numbers already. 18 <laughs> out of a sheet. Yeah, 18. Okay, so this is an 8 by 4 standard sheet. Yes, yeah, Sean? Yeah. Cool. And we are using standard MDF. You can use anything, to be honest. We like MDF because it's flat ply. You can get variations in the thickness, kind of like shuttering ply or any other kind of ply. Unless you're using birch, then it's quite consistent in thickness. MDF is good because it sprays really well. Yeah, it stays nice and flat. It doesn't tend to bow on you, whereas ply, you are using ply for your door blanks or your strips when you cut them up. They can twist and bow on you. have had that so many times. Where they do, um, once you cut them into components, they want to do what they want to do. Whereas MDF is a little bit different. As long as you get good stuff from the suppliers, then you're fine. We use standard MDF because we get really good finishes and we get good quality MDF, not rubbish. We go to a supplier called Lords Builders Merchant and they get it from somewhere else apparently. So they are very, very good. We get really good finishes with our airless sprayer. So that's the materials talked about. Construction process is a piece of 12 mil with six mil strips on the top. If I go into the spray room, I'll show you one in a painting process. So we've been painting a few up. We've got a job on where we've got 12 doors. Pull one out right now. And this has been um, primed both front and back. Okay. And so we're going through the process of giving each door three coats um, per face. So there we go. You can see here the method, you've got the six at the top and the 12 at the bottom, and they stay nice and flat and really happy with this construction method. To get these edges up, please go and see one of my videos. I'll leave a description up the top how I stack all my materials and get those edges up to a really, really high end finish without a lot of work and without doing them singularly, you do them as a pack. So watch that because it's pretty awesome. Save you a lot of time and you will never see those joints between the six and the 12. But this is what it looks like. Absolutely fine for a shaker style door. It's got a nice border. Six mil is nice and thick. It's not too thin, not too thick. It's perfect. And 64 in width 
is a nice size. So the rails you can play around with, you can make the bottom rail chunkier. You know, you can play around with the rail thickness. So the rails are the cross sections. The uprights are the styles. So the rails, you can have a bottom, a mid, a top, play around with the different widths. We tend to just stick with 64 everywhere. And once we've made the stack, we leave them at the top. As you can see here, we've got tons, but we had a job recently where we used about 30. We generally make up about 50 at a go. But um, yeah, today is a little bit different. Sean, how many strips have you got? 180. 180. God, you must have been cutting for ages. Yeah, I know he was. <laughs> um, he was cutting for three hours. Yeah, two, two hours and a bit. Yeah. Two and a bit hours. Anyway, so he's doing two big packs. He's going to do one pack there and one pack there. The way I see it is why just do 10 or 20 do as many as you can in one hit. What's the point in doing 10 when you can do 50 or you can do 100? Fair enough, it's more cutting. But if you were always using these strips and you were going through them, then you're just going to have to do the cutting process twice and getting all your materials out twice, stacking twice. Whereas we're doing a lot here, twice as many as we've ever done. And it just means we've got a stack maybe for a year or two, most likely a couple of years. Yeah, I would have thought so. So anyway, he's got two stacks and we've worked out that we get, how many strips do we get per pack? We've got 600 mil clamps on this, 97-ish, minus three and minus three on that side as well. No, get... no, okay, yeah, cool. All right, you can see here where he's got that strip low as well. So where we've got this clamp, that sand will sail past that clamp, very clever, Sean. I made that mistake last time, the boss did, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a little tip for you. Have that strip lower um, so the sander sails past it. Also, we've got this to help with the stacking process and to keep them level. Don't really need to have them. They could be wavy, whatever, as long as they're flat to the board. Your bench needs to be nice and flat, so if you've got any grit underneath, we're just doing it on OSB so we can knock those down once he's got them clamped up. doesn't damage the bench. Um, we know the bench is really level, no problems with that whatsoever. So yeah, you get about 95, 97, something like that in a pack of 600 clamps. Oh, rip. yeah, 90 rips, five sheets. 90 rips, five sheets. Yeah. There we go. 90 so rips. 10, yeah. 180. Okay, so we use 10 sheets and we got 180. Okay, there's your math. So we cut up 10 sheets to get 180 and we've got two packs. All right, so there's the maths. So when it comes to cutting, what Sean did is he cut the board in half first. What did you set that first rip at, Sean? Can you remember? Uh, 6.08. So Sean cut one rip off at 6.08 with a table saw, okay? Because he's taken into account all the waste, done all his calculations to get as many as 64 mil, mils <laughs> as possible out of a sheet. And this, out of 10 sheets, is all the waste he had, apart from dust. Lots of dust, the extraction is not great at the moment, so don't look at that too much. So really happy about that. We're maximizing the amount of um, pieces that we get out of boards, out of a board. We're not left with a 20, 30, 40 mil strip that we can't use. So it's 64 mil strips, we get 18 per sheet. First rip at 608, giving you two halves, and then Sean set this up at 64 mil, and then he just rips them all through, and that will give you minimal waste. So Sean is stacking them up now. And um, once he's stacked them up, it's just going to be clamps and tap down. Okay, so tap down with a block just to get them as flat as possible because some just want to ride up. Some have got discrepancies because it's a one person cutting. So it's going to be hitting that quite hard with P80. Yeah? Yeah. Um, 120, 240. Yeah. Um, and you can do the filler technique or you can just go straight for the polishing technique. We've tried it where we haven't put the filler on the top afterwards. But as long as you've sanded that flat, you've probably seen that link earlier about the stacking technique. It's the same process for this, remember? Yeah, so with that stacking technique, you can fill, but you can miss out the filling side if you get that sanding really nice. But you may have to put an extra coat of primer on, two to three coats of primer. And then they, they will come out really, really nice. Wow, that's quite wide, Sean. That looks more than 600 to me. Is that more than 600? 620? Oh my god, that was off. I'm usually pretty good. <laughs> 590. You get a few more. So there we go. Um, that is our technique, okay? I'm not going to do any more than that. If you want to see the continuation of this video where I'm making the shake style doors or we're making these strips up, 
where I am making these strips up and showing you the actual filling process. Um, have a look at this video up here. Today was just showing you about the cuts, how many we get per sheets, the widths, the process, etc., etc. So there we go, guys. He's going to get his 600 mil clamps on there in a moment. It'll be ready to sand up with this three grits. And that is what Sean's doing today. I'm going to be on that for a while, aren't you, Sean? Yeah. Anyway. Let me know what you think about the video, guys. If you liked it, like and subscribe if you can. Hit that like button. Share it if you can. It's a really nice and easy, simple way to create shake style doors without the faff. Okay. And if you are especially new to woodworking, this is probably the method that you'd want to use. Also, we're trying to get to 43,000 subscribers. So if you do like the content, hit that subscribe button. Any subscribers out there, thank you very much. I'm going to get on and continue spraying those doors. We've got two more coats to do. So I'm going to leave Sean to it, shove the radio on, and we'll get working. But other than that, guys, have a great Sunday. See you next Sunday. Take it easy. Bye, Sean. Bye, bro. Bye.